Welcome back, and thank you for joining us every night on Way 31 News at 6. We're taking you deeper into the impact of coronavirus. Tonight, I'm joined again by Dr. Ali Hassoun, an infectious disease specialist at Huntsville Hospital. And we thank you for your time, doctor. Let's talk about um, herd immunity. Now, on Wednesday, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said 66% of new patients with coronavirus were coming from homes where they were quarantined. Is it wise, do you think, to keep healthy people? Behind closed doors, who are not at risk for getting sick with the coronavirus. So you know, I think we need to strategize this in a way of knowing who's at higher risk and who's the healthier, who have comorbidities, who have other health issues that at risk of um, you know complications. I think initially what needed to be done, we reduce infection transmission as much as we can because. The health system got uh, significant pressure in the way of how much they can manage with it. Now, as we are able to control it um, in a way where our health system might be able to keep up with it, whatever cases come up, um, we can try strategize this in a way where healthy subject might be able to go back to work, still possibility of exposure, mm -hmm. but reduce their, um, you know, Again, risk. We don't want significant rise in cases. We want, in a way, smooth change and transition. So our health system wouldn't be affected, but also we wouldn't see significant mortality and morbidity uh, from these infections. So you say let, let some people go back to work. And isn't that how the immune system works? We get exposed to these viruses, we build up a natural immunity, and then we're protected. So should more people be exposed to this virus? So, and again, um, this happened with time. So you don't want to get, for example, 100 uh, people exposed at the same time because about 10% of them, uh, for example, might die. No, you want to reduce it to less than that. And each one of these who is healthy, who what we call them pre-symptomatic or had mild symptom, mm -hmm. might shed some of that virus give it to others who's healthy, but it will be really uh, much of a less issues of significant rise in infection, but we'll get herd immunity with it. So again, you can slowly increase it. That's why you have phase one, phase two, phase three, right. rather than you reopen from the beginning completely. Right, that makes sense. Do we know enough about this virus yet, how it spreads and who it impacts the most to make better decisions about who should be staying home and who doesn't need to? Yeah, so currently, uh, most of the data is saying um, the most common way of transmission is through what we call coughing, sneezing, droplet uh, transmission, and aerosolization. Those who's most at risk remain to be the elderly and those who have comorbidities, including those who's immunocompromised, their immune function not good, they have cancer and chemotherapy, they're diabetic, hypertensive, had heart disease. Um, you know, these are the usual ones who's at higher risk, and we need to think about them and keep them safe. So the, the term high risk doesn't necessarily mean you're at high risk for contracting it. It means you're at a higher risk for complications or dying, perhaps. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes. So yes. can anyone be at a higher risk of contracting the disease since no one yet has the antibodies? Um, all of us will be at uh, risk of contracting the disease because n none of us will have antibody in the beginning. I can tell you, as the um, pandemic been ongoing now, some of us might have been exposed. So we're trying, actually, I can tell you, even in our area, trying to figure out how many, what percentage um, in our hospitals, in our community with time to know, um, you know percentage-wise, what's the infection rate and prevalence of it. With time. You know, the State Department of Health announced yesterday that they're going to widen the conditions to, the, to test high risk people before symptoms appear. Is that warranted and do we have the capability to do all that testing? So, till now, uh, we have limited capability in testing. Mm -hmm. It's much better than six weeks ago, uh, but we really still cannot test everyone, unfortunately. We really need to pick and choose who can be tested, otherwise, we'll run out of um, test reagents and swabs. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm hoping yeah. this is going to improve more. 
Yeah, well, in fact, uh, Huntsville Hospital CEO David Spillers and, and, and Huntsville's mayor, Tommy Battle, also said regular testing of workers isn't practical. So how should testing be handled in regards to people returning to work? Um, so it's really um, depending on um, how much they are in close contact between each other at workplace, um, what's their risk categories of um, complications, um, what's their possibility of transmission to others. You know, children, for example, usually asymptomatic, but might give it to others and elderly. So you need to categorize them according to that and try to see who would be at higher risk and probably screen them if possible. I can tell you at the moment uh, for factories and other areas, it'll be very tough to screen everyone. It mm -hmm. will be, again, you go back to screening for symptoms and signs, possibility of exposure, and if any of that is, you know, check marked on it, they probably shouldn't be coming back to work or get tested and look for to prevent transmission to others. Take another quick break. Coming up, coronavirus's impact on children, new symptoms, and what parents should do to help their kids.